Hey friends, hope you're doing well. We recently did a video checking out whether or not the GTX 970 is worth it here in 2019, especially with all the latest game releases that have come out. And today, it's the turn of the GTX 960 to get the same treatment. We're gonna go through the latest games, check and see how does the card hold up in this day and age and I'll do so after I tell you about today's video sponsor. This video is brought to you by our website, UFD Deals. My friends, if you haven't heard of it, UFD Deals is the website where we take all of the best tech deals that we can find on the different websites that exist, put them all on one located area so that you can click on them, save money, and everything's done, whether it be a gaming monitor, gaming hard drive, gaming headset, whatever gaming things you want, gaming graphics cards, even non-gaming ones sometimes like AMD. Ooh, got them, just kidding. Anyways, you go to UFD Deals, Deals at the link in the video description to start saving money on any computer component that you want to put together. You save money, we make money off the affiliate codes and everything just works like a hunky-dory well-oiled machine. So this experiment of me checking out low-end graphics cards actually started with a collaboration that I did with Zach's Tech Turf where we challenged each other to build the best $300 PC that we could in our respective countries, him being in America, me in South Africa. But then after that, I've been just looking at all of this older hardware and being like, you know what? It still needs to be tested out. So we actually picked up this Galax GTX 960 four gigabyte edition, which I'll talk about during the benchmarks. But then we also have picked up a GTX 760 and a five or a 16 or no, geez, it's called a 660 Ti. The 660 Ti, not the 1660 Ti, which we actually have. And we're going to be going through all of them and just kind of looking at each card and seeing how it stacks up in this day and age, especially when it comes to the latest games, because the 960 was still relevant when something like Grand Theft Auto 5 came out. And it can definitely play that just no problem. But what about Devil May Cry 5? What about the VRAM heavy Far Cry New Dawn? How does the 960 stack against that? Because the 970, with its four gigabytes of VRAM, actually does pretty well. You can get 1080p medium settings and hit 60 FPS in most games. So the goal with the 960 was to hit that same FPS threshold. What, what settings do we have to do to get 60 FPS? And we kind of tried to stick to what we could find and then apply that broadly across all games. And it looks like 1080p is definitely possible with the GTX 960, but you have to set everything too low. So that is what we did. And let's go ahead and run through the benchmarks that we were able to pick up with this GTX 960. I will mention that this specific Galax EXOC model uh, maintained a health the temperature of only 60 degrees, never really reaching above that, had a core clock of 1,405 megahertz. So pretty respectable card. Let's, let's look through the games. We've got Assassin's Creed Odyssey. We hit 52 FPS at 1080p low. Far Cry New Dawn with HD textures on, we got 55 FPS. With the normal textures, we got an additional two to make it 57.6. Ghost Recon Wildlands, we got 71.1. I know as of the time that this video is going out that the Division 2 just came out, but I'm on holiday now and it just came out today and I didn't have time to download and benchmark it. So Ghost Recon Wildlands is the latest Tom Clancy game that we have in this benchmark suite. Then we've got Strange Brigade, which is probably the foremost Vulcan game that's out there. And it ran at 89.4 FPS on the Vulcan API. Hitman 2, we got 64 FPS at 1080p low. Shadow of the Tomb Raider uh, was a little rough at 50.6 FPS at 1080p low. Final Fantasy 15 was again also a little hard, 53.3 FPS. Middle Earth Shadow of War was 69.9 FPS. Metro Exodus on low. This actually surprised me since it's so demanding at its higher settings, it actually reasonably scales down pretty well. At 1080p low, the 960 averaged 60 FPS, which is pretty impressive. Devil May Cry 5, 94.4 FPS on low. You, you could jack up those settings quite a bit. Resident Evil 2, 64 FPS. Battlefield 5, 69.6 FPS. You can increase the settings a little bit. And then in the latest Battle Royale du jour, Apex Legends, we managed a healthy FPS of 72.7. So in a lot of respective games, the 960 can still hit 60 FPS, no problem. And even some games like Devil May Cry 5, you could increase 
increase the quality settings and still get 60 FPS, no problem. And even if you lowered it a bit more, maybe to 720p, you would actually be able to hit the 120 FPS mark. So the 960, very respectable. But let's talk about that VRAM issue that I'm sure a lot of you are shouting out there. But there's a 962 gigabyte. Doesn't that one suck? And the answer is probably you're going to lose a few FPS in some games. But based on all of the games that I tested at 1080p low, where the VRAM wasn't an issue for this 964 gig, the average usage was 2.2 gigabytes. So you could shave a couple FPS off of your your the averages that I presented you with here. And that would probably be what a GTX 962 gig does. So you're looking more at around the 50 FPS average as opposed to the 60 FPS average. But that's still entirely respectable, especially if you're willing to drop down even more settings than what I did because I didn't do lowest, I did low. So there's, in several of these games, there is more room for you to decrease the quality settings to get more performance out of the card. The hardest hitting game out of all of the games that I tested was Far Cry new dawn with the hd texture pack installed without the hd texture pack it was 2.1 gigabytes with the hd texture pack it was 3.8 gigabytes so there there's a definite quality improvement that you see but the performance hit isn't there because it has the extra vram with the 962 gig you're not going to be able to run the far cry new dawn with the hd texture pack on and then on top of that one of the other worst offenders was actually devil may cry 5 that one used three gigabytes of vram while i was testing resident evil 2 was around the 2 gigabyte mark. Most of the games that I tested were at 2.1 or 2,100 megabytes or lower, except for those ones that I just mentioned. So the 960, with it coming in at an average used price right now of around 40 to $70, depending on where you are. We've been able to find several on Craigslist and eBay that are right smack dab in the middle of that at $50. For a $50 graphics card, the four gig one is an easy recommendation. I doubt you can buy a better $50 graphics card on the market right now, except for maybe whatever the equivalent was from AMD at the time. What was that, the R9380? Because the 390 was comparable to the 970. And then I guess the 380 would be comparable to the 960. I can't remember. And by the way, in case you guys were wondering, I actually did a dedicated review on this very GPU here on this channel ages ago, which you can check out in that top right hand corner right there. This isn't the same GPU. I haven't kept it for three years. I actually needed to sell it for money, but I was able to pick it up again here uh, used for, I believe I spent 900 Rand on it, which is equivalent to about 65, $70. So I got a decent deal on it for that price. This card's actually pretty phenomenal. 1080p gaming, 60 FPS, as long as you're willing to endure lower quality settings. And if you wanna play on a lower resolution, say 720p, you could probably increase to right around medium and still maintain that 60 FPS average. 960 still holds up here in 2019, even if you're picking up the two gigabyte VRAM model. But I mean, for what I saw for the price difference between two and four gigabytes, just pick up a four gigabyte used one. Highly recommendable. And especially considering that the 970 is about 100, and 100 to $125 used, I would actually... If, if I'm going completely budget right now, I'd rather pick up the 960, lower the quality settings, get the same FPS versus low settings versus medium, but then save that extra money and put it towards something else in my rig or something else in the future, saving up for something better like the GTX 1660 that just dropped. Saving $70 here means that you're $70 closer to a, a card that is better than a 1060 for only $220. That's not necessarily a bad deal. So. That is my review of the GTX 960 in 2019. If you will give me a moment, I'm going to follow myself over here. Why am I following myself? I'm coming over here. The plan for the future is to check out the GTX 760 right here. This one only has two gigabytes of VRAM and the GTX 660 Ti, not 1660 Ti, but the 660 Ti, both with two gigabytes of VRAM. And we'll see how do those stack up are they still relevant in 2019? And is the performance increase from the 660 Ti to the 760 to the 960 to the 1060 equivalent to the performance bump that we just got with the 1660 and 1660 Ti? And we're gonna test it in more modern games, not necessarily with the games that came out way back when. And then we could see price to performance, inflation, all of that kind of stuff taken into account. Is that relevant? So that's gonna be in an upcoming video. So be sure to get subscribed to stay up to date on that. And then one last 
last little bit of housekeeping, I have mentioned it in one or two videos by this point, but we are going to be moving offices. The UFD Tech HQ is just, we're overrun to put it, to put it lightly. So I'm gonna take the, the camera from Reese and I'm just gonna show you. This is the set we're filming at right now. Then right to the left, we have the, or directly to the left, we have the hot news set right over there. And then to the left of the hot news set, we have our streaming setup, which is also where Reese, me, and then our marketing manager sit. And then you can also see that there's a shelf back there. This is the bathroom right there. And then we've got the editing corner right over there. And then that brings us back to the door with the fridge and the air con right there. And then we've got, hey, the set that we're filming on right now. So Reese, if you want to take that back. So we've, we've run out of space. And so we're gonna be moving to a place that's probably five to six times. So you guys are gonna have to pardon our dust in upcoming videos because it's gonna get a little crazy, hectic. Release schedules are gonna be weird. Filming sets are gonna be weird. We're not gonna have things set up to do things properly, but I really appreciate every single one of you who's made this possible. I thank you for everybody who stayed after the review was over to like listen to me talk about the housekeeping stuff because it's not always that you guys uh, get to hear about what's going on behind the scenes but really appreciate all the support. We wouldn't be able to grow this quickly or this immensely without you. So very much appreciate Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know if you have any other graphics cards that you would like us to compare in the future. Uh, just leave your suggestions down below in the comments. Don't forget that today's video is brought to you by UFD Deals. Check it out at the link in the video description. Save money on your next computer to components so that we can make money and everybody's happy and we can continue to do videos like this. Or if you don't want us to do videos like this, uh, hit the dislike button twice. So hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content and uh, moving vlogs. Yay, moving vlogs. Uh, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too.